Did you know that one of the highest ranked League of Legends streamers got to the top of the ranked ladder by literally inting? I'm dead serious, no pun intended. His name is the Baus FFS, and he's a Swedish Scion main who climbed his way to Challenger by literally running it down. He exhausted, he didn't exhaust my passive. Yes! Yes! The thing is, some people weren't so wild about that. But if you ask anybody on any server, nobody likes playing with that freak. But is his infuriating playstyle actually changing the game for the better? Is Riot trying to stop its players from having fun? And is it really inting if it works? Oh, kill them! Kill me! You guys are so bad! You got... Oh! Oh my god! Oh my god! Holy shit! Penta kill! Penta kill! All right, so before we dive into the enemy base and start banging down tier fours, I must ask that you please consider liking the video and if you haven't already, subbing to the channel. It really does help. So yeah, the boss. If you know anything about League of Legends, you know that everybody loves to talk and argue about this sweet Swedish Scion Surgeon. You see, on paper, Scion's passive was designed to function as a last stand mechanic for a beefy frontline character. Similar to Siege's Withstand, or indeed Last Stand in Call of Duty, the ability gave Scion a quick, temporary, fight-till-the-end type failsafe that permitted him to pack in a few punches before piecing out. The issue is that sometimes Baus skipped to the end. He realized that since Scion got reanimated with increased attack speed and damage, he could abuse his opponents at virtually every stage of the game. He's here. He's running. I'm already here. I, I arrive faster in lane, so I can do what I want with it. And what I want to do right now is pushing it. So I will be able... I get to, I get to choose how the wave state is going to be. Me dying makes me get the choice. Always die, guys. It's a very OP strategy. He also realized that if he paired it with Hullbreaker, he could single-handedly take over the game. I'm going Go! for it. Okay. Go! Simon! Go for it. Oh my god, wait, well, no way. Oh my god. Are you kidding? I don't think I'm I got it. Oh! I got it. Yes. Let's go. The boss. No, 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 no. All in all, the Baus's skill was undeniable. He had a zero tilt mindset, his macro was immaculate, and in addition to consistently hitting Challenger on European servers, he even did it once in Korea. What infuriated people was how he played. The dude died, like a lot, a lot, a lot, and not always for a good cause. I'm just losing. It's not even close. What the f I have this disgusting inter in my team. The community had very different opinions about whether his self-destructive playstyle was good, bad, or in a word, worth. Some people thought that he was genuinely innovating. <laughs> oh, Sion killing there? Sion killing there, sincero? Oh, Sion is not pushing us. Not pushing us, Sion. Just a Sion. Others, not so much. Never win a game with this guy as a teammate. <laughs> okay, relax, dude. The games me and him played, 
I was not the <laughs> whatever. But if you ask anybody on any server, nobody likes playing with that freak, which kind of explains why EUS is the way it is. Because he ruins the game. Everybody want his dipshit fanboys like, <laughs> I'm going to sit in side lane. I don't know macro. Do I like to play with the boss? No. Do I think he's going to silent? Yes. Do I think he's com going to completely grieve the game? Not necessarily. Do I like his play style? No, I think it's fine, but... Because of this collective backlash, Baus has been banned for intentional feeding not once, not twice, not thrice, but four times over the course of the past year. Unlucky. It's so unreal. Oh my god. It's so unreal, man. I can't. I can't. I don't know what to do. I won the game, Riot. I won the game. It's also very likely that he is the reason that Riot opted to nerf both Hullbreaker and Scion's passive. Wake up today, and this is the change they did. And I go into practice tool, and my, my demolish deals 40% less damage. At this point, I, f I literally think Riot is listening to the stream. Like, why would they make- why would they change the change? Like, well, what's happening? Do I have to stop talking? Like, did I, did I seriously snitch on myself? I said the nerf wouldn't be that big of a deal. So then they doubled down on it. F off. <laughs> While Riot have reverted his bans in the past, stating explicitly that they weren't warranted. After reviewing the game that triggered the suspension, I can say for sure that this restriction was not warranted. I can say for sure. It's good to know that we do not penalize players that try their best to win the game. It's clear that given the conflicts between Baus and some members of the community, the debate over his playstyle still hasn't been resolved. What if I do 1v1s? Oh, <laughs> it's a perma ban. Oh my god. It's a perma ban. League partner account. Oh my god, no man. Baus is a rebel, a rule breaker. He is productively violating the most sacred law in the history of the MOBA, do not feed, and he is doing it with a smile plastered across his face. What's worse, at the height of his Hullbreaker Scion antics, he was exploiting an ability in a way that wasn't intended. It's safe to say that Scion's passive wasn't designed to engender literal inting and more importantly, reward it. Kill them. Kill them. Oh my god. Oh my god. I just got a pentakill. I just got a pentakill. As such, it's actually understandable that the community might construe Baus's playstyle, whether he's playing Scion or something else, as antagonistic to the very DNA of League. Because in a sense, it is. And thank God for that. Look, it's no secret that I'm not the hugest fan of League of Legends. I grew up on Dota All-Stars, have spent nearly six and a half thousand hours playing Dota 2, and am just generally of the opinion that League of Legends is a watered down regressive spin-off of a superior progenitor that whilst fun is a overly regimented party game engineered for casuals that a whole lot of people have been convinced is capable of being taken seriously. My producer is 100% cutting that. But the worst part is that as soon as someone finds a way to veer off the beaten path and, you know, express themselves, Riot tends to swoop in and squash it. They want everything to be easy, accessible, and unbreakable. They like rules. They think that they know how League should be played better than the people who actually play League. Riot wants you to live in a society, to never, ever limit it. Unfortunately, that's just not how we as a species are wired. Humans love to limit test. It's just how we're built. It's also how ideas are built. Let's talk about the 15th century for a second. No, 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 no just stay with me. 
Once upon a time, there was an astronomer named Nicholas Copernicus who realized that so much new and existing science just didn't make sense if the universe revolved around the Earth. Instead, he suggested that the Earth and neighboring planets might in fact orbit the Sun. Suffice it to say, he pissed a lot of people off, just like our innovative Swedish Scion protagonist. But that's kind of the point. You see, conventional science at the time was wrong. For hundreds, if not thousands of years, systems have progressed by failing. That's true of philosophy, of science, of art, and especially of esports. So many mechanics that are essential to the games we love were never meant to exist in the first place. Arteezy blocking, creep stacking, bandit tricking, mav tricking, one ways, glitch mollies, option selects, wave dashing. Actually, wave dashing was intended. Sakurai himself admitted that Nintendo became aware of it during development, but you get the idea. And we're not just talking about one-off niche interactions here. Entire esports have been birthed from pushing the limits of what an engine has to offer. From modes, to mods, to spin-offs, to speedrunning. So much of the gaming zeitgeist has been built on a bunch of bored, intelligent idiots breaking shit. So why is it that that can't happen in League? Well, to a certain degree, it has. Yeah, the fact is that we talked about who would never get that. Lee Sin is going to go in here on the yellow feet. He gets knocked up. Kenneth is going to go into the middle, but yellow feet will die. Matlan going to fall down as well. And Edward going very, very low, gets a pull up in the end, but they're ripping through the rest of them. Double kills coming out for Jai, and they're not done just yet. They're going to chase down Diamond. What I really liked was the Sightstone Lee Sin. The second I saw that item get released, I was like, that's gonna be so fun on Katarina and Lee Sin. I'll jump towards all day. And you saw how powerful the extra mobility was. Normally it's flash kicks, it was ward kicks. That was awesome. League has seen its fair share of weird meta-defining innovations. The question is why Riot, and by extension, the community, are so quick to squash them. Basically, the entire point of gold funneling is to interact with the enemy team as little as possible and to just put all of your resources into a champion that can hard carry. And uh, I feel like it's not fun to watch, it's not fun to play, and it's especially not fun to play against. Now, look, that's not to say that there aren't shitty metas or that certain builds or champions aren't just outright broken. But there does seem to be this sense in which Riot has successfully convinced their community that coloring outside the lines is a bad thing. Which is just sad. For as long as esports have been around, there have been weird offbeat pioneers pushing the systems they love to their very limits. Sometimes they even exceed them. But that's okay, because that's how the systems and those who inhabit them get better. Okay, triple quad boost. Oh. oh, it's been booked by Smuya. He's read that. Ultimately, it isn't a question of whether you respect Baus's playstyle, but rather what it represents. The man is, in no uncertain terms, a pioneer. You may think that he's a dirty, filthy feeder, but he's found a way to have impact on the server in a way that no one ever has. He should be celebrated for that, not chastised. Lately, a lot of people have been wanting me to be permanently banned for my playstyle and stuff like this. I'm not making this guide to try and defend myself, or I'm not making this guide to force my playstyle onto anyone. There are so many people that play a lot more normally who are way better than me. So I'm not saying that how I'm playing the game is the correct way or anything like that. All I want to do with this video is show how I've been getting high elo these last few years and maybe teach you a thing or two. So stop ragging on the guy for choosing to express himself and instead start finding your own way to ruffle feathers because those are the players who matter. The ones who push the envelope. And isn't that what esports is all about? Oh, I killed them. You guys are so bad! You got... Oh! Oh my god! Oh my god! Holy sh! Pentakill! Pentakill! Pent hexa kill! I got a hexa kill! I got a hexa! F Leela. I'm not f Leela. F the people who play Leela. God damn it, bro. Only thing worse than League of Legends is the people who f play it, bro. 
That's the facts. That's the truth. All right. Jesus. League would be okay, actually. League would be tolerable if the people who played it didn't weren't the f people who played it. God damn.